Hello folks, Shin Tiger Curl here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another wrestling review. I'm of course joined by my friend and fellow internet superstar, Joe. Say hi, Joe. He's feeling funky tonight. And why is he feeling funky tonight? Because it's t it's Monday night. Time for some raw. It's it's yet another build up week for us for um for the Royal Rumble, which is the first stop on the road to WrestleMania. What kind of shenanigans are we going to see tonight? I got my notes. Let's get started. First up, Darth Kane comes out and spouts off a great promo about the about the importance of hate. How everyone everyone who says Cena sucks is really saying they suck themselves, and that the only way for uh, Cena must give in to the hate if he has a chance of beating him. I like where this is going because. You gotta understand it. Cena, what Kane is trying to do, he's doing something. He's gonna try to do something that no one has ever done before to John Cena. Of course, there's some that can beat him physically. No one can beat John Cena physically. But what he wants to do is beat him psychologically, to make him violate his morals. He doesn't want to beat John Cena. He wants to do far worse than that. He wants to corrupt him. But uh, but then Cena comes out. No smiles for him as he sprints down the ring, eyes full of hate. And he and Kane brawl all the way into the back. They brawl outside into the loading dock, and it seems like Kane has him on the ropes when Cena pulls out a, a tire iron. Not very heroic, Cena. But just but Kane gets one last shot in before he disappears. Let that sink in for a minute. Next up. Tag team match: Sheamus and Santino versus Wade Barrett and the prodigy Mike Mike Bennett. Oh my mistake! It's Jinder Mahal. You see, he, him, and Mike Bennett are so completely bland and pointless; they're just interchangeable. Uh, this was an okay match. Jinder had too much ring time to be any any time impressive, but in the end, he got thrown to the wolves and he got buried. So, well, he can't be buried. He's already as down, down deep as it gets. He eats a bro kick and then a cobra. Santino and and, and Sheamus win. Uh, backstage, Johnny Ace is talk. Miz is talking to Johnny Ace about some protection from from our truth. Johnny Ace is like, "Sorry, I'm not a little Jimmy. I'm Big Johnny." You're growing on me, Ace. And tells Miz to find his own protection. And throughout the night, um, Johnny Ace. I mean, throughout the night, Miz goes to several superstars to attempt to enlist protection for him in his confrontation with um the with um with truth. Meanwhile, all throughout the night, there's several backstage segments as Kane is stalking Zack Ryder, who has a date with Eve Torres finally. Watch yourself watch yourself, Zack. He really wants to give you a rough rider. Next up next up the W the scene. The scene is how it's near WrestleMania, and you know what that means. It's time for the 2012 WWE Hall of Fame. Each year, a select few individuals who have made a great impact in the professional wrestling industry as a whole are honored and, and get into the prestigious halls of the Hall of Fame. A virtual who's who of professional wrestling royalty has entered the halls of fame, Hall of Fame, from Stone Cold Steve Austin to Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, uh, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Dusty Rhodes, The Legion of Doom, The Wild Samoans, Rocky Johnson, and the list goes on and on. This year, we this year our first inductee is someone who very much deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Mr. Adam Copeland, a.k.a. the Radar Superstar, Edge. If you didn't know by now, then where have you been for the last year? But Edge was forced to retire last year due to... Due to a severe neck injury that if he wrestled one more match he would be paralyzed or have died in the ring. So this was already coming. I mean, Edge has led a prestigious career. He's won more titles than any man in history. He is he has defined the Money in the Bank ladder match, defined the TLC match, eleven time world champion, and um and the only man in WWE history next to Kurt Angle to have held every major male world title. And plus, he's the only man to have ever won the Royal Rumble, the King of the Ring, and the Money in the Bank match. A feat that has never been duplicated. So, hats off to you, Edge. 
You've earned it. Our next match is Kofi Kingston versus Daniel Bryan. It was a very short match with Daniel Bryan winning with the LaBelle Lock. And as he celebrates, Big Show comes out. To, he comes out. Bryan talks about how the last, that last Thursday, I mean last um, Friday's night SmackDown title match ended very sourly, and he was agreed to give him any a title match anytime he wants. Big Show this, and Raw and Gen, SmackDown general manager that it Theodore Long agree. So it's another rematch for a rematch. As Daniel Bryan defends the World Heavyweight title against Big Show in a no DQ, no disqualification match. So, we're going to see some shenanigans in that one. Next up, finally, after months and months of backpedaling and, 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 and stalling, we finally get the debut of Brodus Clay. And it was... All I would say to this is, go watch it for yourself. It's funky. Hence why Joe is feeling funky tonight. He debuted against Curtis Haw Kurt Hawkins and beat him quite soundly, but I'm digging what they're doing with, with um, Brodus Clay, the Funkasaurus. I'm not going to say any more than that. Look it up online. It's probably popped up somewhere, so please look it up. And Joe th thinks so, too. Uh, next up, Swagger takes on CM Punk in a tune-up match. Johnny Ace comes out and says that, as an added stipulation to prove that he's fair and impartial, if CM Punk beats Swagger, then, then Swagger and Vicky Guerrero are banned from ringside for their title match at the Royal Rumble. And he also announces that tonight, Swagger will be in a match against John Cena. So there's that. Anyway, this was a pretty good match. Um, you two got two very good ring technicians in Swagger and Punk. The end is very sort of botchy. Um, um, Punk goes for the Macho Man elbow drop. He pins him, but the ref counts a three even though he got his shoulder up, and Punk didn't seem too happy about that. So, yeah, I think that, um, that there was a botch somewhere in there. I don't know. If somebody knows if that was really a botch, just let me know in the comments below. But, yeah, anyway. Next up... The next inductee to the to the 2012 class of of the of the WWE Hall of Fame is announced, and ah, damn! Sorry, I've been typing all day. I got freaking carpal tunnel, and I mean my hands frozen up. I mean, look, just look at that. Just look. wait. Coincidence? I think not. That's right. The, great, the first and greatest healed stable of all time. The Four Horsemen are being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, and Barry Windham. Sorry, Ole. But I'm going to see how they're going to figure this out since Flair is kind of fucking up his legacy over in that other company. But yeah. Next up, Ricardo Rodriguez calls out R-Truth um, under the guise of The Miz. R-Truth comes out crazy as I don't know what, and he says something, and, and he starts singing La Cucaracha, which gets him over with the crowd, but instead he gets got by Truth. Miz hits the ring, but he tries to fight um, Truth, but Truth fights him off. Next up, Chris Jericho comes out, hopefully to say something tonight. He does his, he did his stick from last week schmoozing into the crowd and doing all of his hyped up rock and roll shit. Then he picks up a mic and then he just starts weeping. And then he leaves. That's right, you hypocrites and sycophants and parasites don't deserve a, a Y2J promo. Yeah. Next up, Eve is scheduled to have a match, but then Kane decides to make his appearance. Oh, his music just hits, but he doesn't appear. Zack Ryder heads to the ring, drag, takes Eve out to the back, and they jump into his car, but his car has a flat, so he has to change the tires. Insert horror movie music here. Meanwhile, back in the ring, John Cena takes on Dolph Ziggler. The match was pretty much a show-off period for, um, for Ziggler, who looked amazing in the ring. He even did the Ric Flair strut and did some sit-ups on John Cena's body. That's right, screw push-ups. Scott Steiner, it's all about sit-ups these days. Anyway, right when Cena's about to, to take the match, 
the back the, the, the Titan Tron cuts back to um, Zack and Eve, which Kane comes in to finally take that ass. He beats the crap out of out of out of out of um, Zack and choke slams him off the um, off the loading dock. Cena, with the match still going on, is distracted and gets a sleeper hold by by Ziggler, but he pushes him off of him through, into the steel steps. So the match is a foobar. He quickly runs out to the back to look for his friend, but he too is attacked by the hate machine that is Darth Kane, and he is taken out. And thus Raw ends with Kane standing over a prone John Cena. And that is Monday Night Raw. My thoughts? It was unexpected, but goddamn it was entertaining. I mean, the matches weren't all there, but they just told some great stories tonight. I mean, with um with Miz and Truth's whole backstage shenanigans, with the whole ongoing Kane Cena thing, uh, Zach being stalked by Cena, um the being stalked by Kane, um and the debut of um Brutus Clay. Bonky. Overall, I should not like this show because of how, how silly it was, but god damn it, I can't find anything wrong with it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I can't hate it. The, the, the WWE took some gambles here and they kind of paid off. And I know what you're expecting. Because of this, I can't, in my right mind, give a D cell battery award out to anyone. Not even Cole deserves it. I mean, even during the match between Daniel Bryan and um, Kofi Kingston. He didn't say that much to bury him. He just didn't talk about him bad enough to warrant me throwing a D-cell battery at his head. Maybe that's because the the um, the E is cracking down on his trolling lately. And not to mention, Kane did kind of interrupt a, a Divas match, so we got that. But yeah, this is a good this is a good setup for a lot of the only match that I would kind of give a D-Cell battery award to is the tag match since I really didn't care much for it but it wasn't so bad that it deserved one but yeah and that's my review of Raw tune in hopefully this Friday when I attempt to review um, Friday Night Smackdown it's the rematch of the rematch Daniel Bryan versus Big Show no disqualifications no count outs there must be a winner how will this turn out? Just have to turn in and see. So until then, this is Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, and Joe, saying goodnight and wrestle on.